Ron John. Great to see you. Nice to meet you. Well, we've met each other many times, as you as you know, in the past, but we're meeting each other in uh, Riyadh, which is a fascinating experience for us both, isn't it? Isn't it wonderful? Perfect temperature, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Yep, couldn't get any better. <laughs> and I, I guess that really with you being a, uh, a pioneer in, in machine learning and you're here at a longevity conference, what's, what's the background behind all that for you? Well, my first AI system was in 1983, believe it or not. So I've actually been working in AI for 40 years. Oh, uh, early badge holder then. But for the last 10 years, I've been really working with the confluence of mathematics and medicine. So uh, I'm an adjunct professor in genetics at Stanford University, and I've been teaching longevity science, uh, AI, genes, and ethics uh, yep. for the last few years at Stanford. And really, we want to look at big problems. In 1983, we were doing speech recognition. And people would fall off their chair mm -hmm. uh, when they see, see, see what happens. And now, you know, other people sort of kind of blase about it. I think that's where longevity is today. Really big ideas. And that's where I want to work on in, can we get really uh, past 100? 100 is a new 80. Lots of people are getting 100. Yeah. Uh, the oldest living person is 122. The oldest person who ever lived was 122. Uh, Jean Colment, interesting enough, she stopped smoking at 112. Uh, uh, but it seems like things triangulate at 117. The really, really oldest people, uh, it'd be great if we can get lots of people to that age. But we're going to have to do something fundamentally different to get to 150. Yes. And that's really what I'm trying to work on. Uh, you know, diet, exercise may get us to the 100 level. 120, some therapeutics, but to 150, how do we do it? Okay, so um, obviously there's a lot of work going on in, in drug discovery at the moment. A lot of people are developing their platforms. It's, in fact, it's the largest category of investment in longevity as, as we've analyzed. So you've got this new organization, Agemica, right? So Agemica is a, is a drug discovery business, um, but why is it different to everybody else? Very different. Uh, what we're trying to do is develop a vaccine. And you may ask, a vaccine for what? Mm -hmm. uh, a vaccine for what? A vaccine for aging. Okay. So how do we, how do, we do that? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, is that something you take once or once a year uh, or once a day? If you, if you, if you meant you could stop aging I and mean, what does what does that actually mean does it just stop aging or does it actually reverse aging yep uh at agemica we've got a platform that is actually trying to find combinations of existing drugs not only do we want to get a vaccine we also want to develop it quicker than mm -hmm. anyone else mm -hmm. and cheaper than right. anyone else so you're taking anything out of the covid playbook there in terms oh. of well, um, COVID did, did a number of machine learning activities. I think there's still a race for actual drug to be invented by a computer. You see a lot of these press releases. Often when you dub, double click on it, it's only the, they've just got to a phase one level. Mm -hmm. There's a race to get to the fully approved phase three drug. Mm -hmm. We want to create a vaccine fully approved in less than 10 years maybe we can get the evolution prize we're here that's seven years mm -hmm. how are you going to do it you can't do a new chemical entity that'll add 10 years minimum to your uh, development pro pro yep. profile uh you've got to speed up the probability of success you've got to increase the probability of success. right now it's a one in 20 chance at the preclinical stage to get to the end mm -hmm. uh with machine learning uh we believe we can uh, increase that substantially uh, if you have a genetic uh, profile, uh, it's a 40% improvement. If you're using biomarkers, it's a 3x improvement. Uh, so machine learning will give us a higher probability to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, we also need to uh, go do the trials. The trials take a long time. Yeah. How do you condense the trials to a short time? That means you have to use existing drugs and just in drugs in different combinations. So our thesis, you don't have to invent any new drugs. They've already mm -hmm. been invented. Mm -hmm. uh, 2,500 of them are fully approved. Uh, there's another few thousand that have got through one of the phases. The phase one is the safety phase. Mm -hmm. So if you're using that as a database and using the other equivalents of the FDA around the world, 
you've got 10, 15,000 drugs to choose from uh, uh, that are now safe. Now you can accelerate the trial uh, process. So presumably by that point, you've, re you've reached a combination therapy of, um, of a number of those and how you discover those through AI. And obviously you've got to find the right candidates before you start committing to trial. So, so what is the process that you're going to apply the technology e to? Excellent question, because there's lots of drug discovery platforms. Uh, I've seen many of them and they give me a list mm -hmm. of candidates. Uh, so classic machine learning response to that a question that eva I evaluate is, yeah, but anyone can come up with a list of 50 candidates. I can come up with, you can come up with a list, but how do we know they work? Yeah. Uh, so what we did, we tested our platform uh, on existing diseases and we tried to find what compounds, what drugs would work for existing diseases blinded so we don't mm -hmm. know what works ahead of time and is that one at a time or is that all of them at the same time no all of them at the same time mm -hmm. and we try to spit out which ones uh would work and amazingly enough we were generally for we tried it on cancer to start mm -hmm. with so you've we, already exercised you've yeah, already done this yeah we rediscovered it we recently have the standards of care we weren't always in the top one we're but we're in the top 10 uh -huh. but maybe our top one was better we don't really know uh, and before you spend a lot of money, you need to actually have a high chance. So the next step is then you have to try things on cell lines, then you try on uh, uh, animals and before, uh, because the trial phase, even in a condensed phase, is still expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to increase the probability and speed it up. So just to, time slicing where you are now, obviously, you've got to get to an IND filing yes. before you can then start obviously going in human. Um, have you identified the candidates now or is your mission to identify those candidates? We've identified some candidates mm -hmm. uh, of uh, combinations yeah. uh, that uh, we work. we've worked with. We've just started doing, uh, uh, finished a whole load of cell line tests. Yeah. And uh, now we want to go to the next stage of uh, creating that IND package. Okay. And you. The thing and, is, we have to be pragmatic about it. And you can go straight to IND from where you are because obviously you're using safe drugs. Is that right? That's exactly okay, correct. Right. So the uh, uh, you, you you've got to there's a there's a combination group at the FDA that you have to go through. It's not it's not a straightforward. Some people think it's a straightforward path. It's not completely straightforward. Because yeah. It might be safe on by itself, mm -hmm. but is the combination safe? Is the interaction may not be. And that IND filing. Obviously, you're not going to make that an IND filing about aging. So presumably you have chosen some candidates that you're going to work with first. That's exactly right. It's not pragmatic to do aging because aging is not considered a disease by the FDA. So you have to look at age correlated diseases. Mm -hmm. And uh, our first set is cancer. Right. Uh, the other two categories we want to look at is cardiovascular and neurodegenerative. Uh, the trick is, is finding a universal signature across all of these diseases. Mm -hmm. um, and so you might argue you, you, you're creating mini vaccines for each of these categories, a vaccine for cancer, a vaccine uh, for heart attacks, a vaccine for uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, but in the end, we want to create a vaccine for aging. Mm -hmm. uh, and we think we can do that in under 10 years. Okay. So um, in terms of then where you are commercially as an organization. So you've done a lot of work in the background. Have you put your own capital into this? I have. Of, yeah. I've put my money where my mouth is. Okay. As you know, I'm a prolific investor, and uh, but this is a company that is a, uh, a moonshot company uh, which will uh, make a dramatic difference to people's lives. Yeah, it sounds fascinating. I mean, obviously, um, you're not operating in a bubble. Other people are talking about a similar type of thing. But of course, you seem to be moving quite fast on all of this. So that's that's very encouraging. Well, uh, Agile, what's interesting is there are a lot more tools available to you and processes to actually do things in a very cost efficient manner. It's amazing the number of experiments you can do that you can actually outsource mm -hmm. in, a, uh, uh, in, a, in a low cost manner. And certainly we're gonna be in that, that model, a very, very small team rather than building everything out ourselves. Uh, we're gonna find specialist uh, uh, CROs and specialist labs to help us in the actual experimentation. Okay. Um, but the candidate selection and the road mapping is going to be our job.
So, so just playing back as we're here now at the Heevolution events, we heard about X Prize yesterday. We've seen the shape of the challenge that's being laid down. So you have to, from memory, you have to be able to affect muscle, cognition, and immunity. So yes. it, cognition we've talked about yes. and immunity we've talked about. Um, would muscle factor yes. into, into the um, process? Sarcopenia, which is the uh, muscle degradation as we get older, uh, the numbers thoughts why that happens uh, the, 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 could be by the immune system not mm -hmm. correcting uh, uh, areas so, so as you do multiple things each one we think will get easier yeah because many many things that solve um, cancer can also solve uh, uh, neurodegenerative diseases well we've seen uh, the immune... GLP ones right exactly how it, how it, yes right. exactly so, so, so just thinking just coming back to XPRIZE then so obviously you, you've got three to target which is yes. which is what you can do um, the timelines are pretty aggressive though right yeah. so you need so, to be in a position where you can prove this with a 10 year efficacy within one year which is again quite a no quite exactly a so uh, so I think there's certain uh, uh, things you just physically won't be able to do in, if you want to enter the uh, seven year challenge. Uh, you're going to have to do drug repurposing mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you're going to have to show symptomatic relief uh, quickly. I mean, I, I take a lot of supplements. Sounds like you do, Phil, mm -hmm. a lot of supplements. I don't notice any difference. I won't find out for another 25 years that I didn't get, uh, uh, I didn't get uh, prostate cancer. Yeah. Um, but I don't see any instantaneous, very few of the supplements I take give me an instantaneous relief. So uh, this is not quite instantaneous. It's a year. Mm -hmm. um, I think you can measure uh, uh, biomarkers and there's a mini industry of aging clocks. Yeah. Uh, there's about 80 organs in the body and uh, the, 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 they're popping up clocks for each of those organs. Yes. So any company that wants to do this is going to have to really look at clocks for each of those things. Of course, and that, that's a very contentious issue at the moment. I'm sure the XPRIZE team are going to lean into that. But uh, so we can uh, conclude our interview, I'd like to just ask you a, a quite fundamental question about study design, Roger, because really at the end of the day, uh, with a vaccine, you want to be taking the vaccine as early as possible in your life so that you're in a position where you don't you, know, you don't get the disease or whatever it may be. So when do you see the, the time window would be for people to, to take this therapy when it's available? The, the time window? But, what, do you take it in your 20s? Do you take oh, it in I your see, 30s? I see what you mean. Yeah, so it's going to be, I think, phased out because the FDA, there's nothing wrong with you. The FDA is going to take a dim view on taking something that's because you have nothing wrong with mm -hmm. you. Uh, so you're going to have to do phases, I think, um, the way it works with people who are on the older side will be taking it and then as you see safety efficacy um uh, then uh it will appear younger so i would think in the in the uh 40s i, okay. think. I don't think it'd be 20s right there's nothing wrong with you why would you take it well interesting <laughs> i mean conceptually that's where we have to understand as an industry what, when's the right time? I mean, most of our readership is uh, millennial generation. So yes. that's, that's very interesting, you know, in terms of it's not boomers trying to hang on to their existence. It's people that are trying to get ahead of the issue. So, I mean, again, it's quite a, what you're doing is fascinating because it's leading into trial design, it's leading into drug discovery, it's leading into uh, approvals and so on. So, yeah, I mean, it sounds very interesting and uh, best of luck with it all. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me.